Very excited for you all to be here with us this evening with Sydney Brown and our program on overcoming adversity. My name is Justin Brown, the Director of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. Very excited that you're all here with us this evening. This week is Homelessness Awareness Week. And our job as a district is to make sure that we're bringing awareness to a lot of different people and a lot of different lived experiences that our students and families go through each and every day. I know that Downingtown is a very affluent district, um, but most people would think um, actually 6% of our students and families actually deal with some type of housing insecurity. So it's a great time for us to bring awareness to this, great time to bring empathy, understanding, and respect to others, and most important, kindness. Um, a lot of times they say, don't meet your idols, right? They're like, oh, when you meet these people, they're not good people, like these football players, they're getting paid, they're doing, they're not real people. And I can honestly say to you that Sydney is probably one of the most down to earth, humble people that I've ever met in my entire life. Um, when I first met Sydney, he came up to me, he was like, hey, Sydney, how you doing? I'm like, great. We were there doing an autism uh, awareness program together. And Sydney was like, hey man, would love to get into the schools. Let me tell you my story. And he just simply just told me his story. And I said to him, I said, Sydney, have you ever talked to people about this story? And he said, no. Look at everybody, they're reading all your <laughs> stats that are up on the screen, right? Oh my God. What I want you to say is it doesn't matter what somebody does on the field, it's about what somebody does in their heart. And when I tell you that this individual really cares about people, has a heart for people, and truly tries to connect with people, this is Sydney Brown, 100%. So this evening, I'm very proud, very prideful. I want you all to give a very hearty Downingtown welcome to Sydney Brown, everybody. Give it up for him. All right, is your mic on? Is it on? All right, yeah, go ahead. You, you can talk to the people that are here. Yeah, listen, no, I appreciate you guys having me here tonight. Um, you know, homelessness awareness is, is something that I hold tightly to myself. Um, it's something that I experienced. And just to give you a little background on what I did um, and kind of my story is I, um, I grew up in Canada for 16 years. Uh, when I was 16, my mom uh, was affected by an autoimmune disease that forced her out of work. Um, she couldn't produce, she couldn't provide. And what that eventually did is it forced my brother, uh, my sister, and myself into a homeless, homeless shelter. And really in that moment, I had a decision to make, my brother and I both. And it was, hey, listen, we can stay here and do what we're doing now, and, or we can get out. And the opportunity to get out came by a family in Braden in Florida, and that just opened up so many doors. And it gave me a, a vision of something that I, I wasn't able to see when I was locked within the doors of Canada. So. Um, you know, that just the, the experience and the, the stigma that goes around. When you're living in that place, it's just something that you never want to return to. So um, I'm glad I'm here to able to talk about it tonight. And again, Justin, thank you for the opportunity. Yes, absolutely. And we also have Janelle Sass here. I'm allow her to introduce herself to you. She's going to be taking care of the Q&A portion because there's going to be a time tonight where you get to ask Sydney your questions directly. Janelle? Hi, my name is Janelle Sass. I'm a learning support teacher at Downingtown East High School. Got some kudos in the back for my students. Uh, thank you for my students who are here tonight supporting us. Wave to you in the back. <laughs> They're waving. Um, we worked with Sydney this summer as well, so we got to know Sydney from the walk, and he is amazing. So we're going to show a, a quick uh, clip here um, how it all got started with Sydney and his brothers in the clip. Um, his name is Chase. So. Excellent, excellent, excellent. That, that film is available online for you if you ever want to go back and see it. It's from the NFL Network. But we're going to go ahead and jump into a few questions for Sydney. So, Sydney, you can come right on up. All right, and here's our first question. So, you and your family have faced tremendous challenges from homelessness to relocating for your education and sports. So, I want you to tell me, how did these experiences shape your determination and your resilience? Yeah, so, I mean, determination and resilience. Um, I guess it was just something I kind of learned from my family. Um, I was very blessed to have role models in my life that it, um, were very resilient and had a lot of determination in what they did. Um, but honestly, for me, myself, it was my family that pushed me to get to where I want to be. Um, you know, just taking it day in and day out and understanding that um, if I want to be successful, I've got to push for what I want, right? And if it's not only on the football field, but that also relayed to the classroom as well, where I wasn't as gifted. Um, so. Yeah, I mean, it just, being at rock bottom and understanding that, you know, I can stay here, I can make change in my life, and be where I want to be, 
um, I guess where that, that's something that just built over time is that resilience, that want to, the, um, you know, that, that desire to be a better version of myself and be the best version of myself day in and day out, um, if that helps answer your question. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It kind of goes into our next question, too, because you had a lot of transitions. So first your transition from Canada to the U.S. and then going to Florida. Can you share, you know, a pivotal moment for you or a lesson that you learned from your time in high school that influenced your growth to now? Yeah, so I mean, there's, there's, this, there's this one story I always tell, and when my brother and I made that transition to go down to Florida, they put us in this uh, room where we had to take a placement test. And <laughs> my brother and I are sitting beside each other. He's sitting here, I'm sitting here. They give us the test, and <laughs> I'm like, what is going on? I, I had no idea it was, I mean, I was, I was in 10th, 11th grade at the time, and I had this was a placement test that had math all the way back down to eighth grade. So it was just a moment there that I had to kind of lock in and understand that if I want to get through and go to college and get what I want, um, you know, I'm going to have to make a change uh, within my academics. So I guess just that moment there was something to where I knew um, I was behind a little bit, but I knew that I had to kind of make that change to even have a chance at uh, where I am now. So and then again, I just... You know, there was also another moment in time when we made that drive down to Florida, and you know, we're 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 coming from Canada, and as you get down to Florida, you could get the palm trees, and you get everything coming into the scene, and um, you know, when we pull into the house, I mean, we left from the homeless shelter and we pulled into this, to their house. Um, we didn't know what to expect. We didn't understand who we were living with. We just knew them by name, and you know, when we we pulled in front of the Yates' family's house. I mean, it just, it was just a, it was just a change where I, it was, it was only something that I dreamed about, you know, the, the, the big home, the, the gated community and all that. And um, I guess that just that moment in time, I had to, it was just such a big change. I didn't really, I couldn't really imagine, um, I guess what that, that change would look like. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Raise your hand in this room if you are a Downingtown student. Raise your hand. Because one thing that I think that Sydney did, which was really key, which I'm going to ask him to talk about, is that he needed help in some subjects. So he went and got help. Talk to us about that. Yeah, I mean, I was, I was lucky to have the people in my corner, especially Mr. Yates, Phil Yates, who was, like I said in the thing, a mathematician, very uh, bright and had a good understanding of what we were learning. So. Um, you know, he kind of took, he took us under our wing, and I, I, I'm, not, I'm not someone who likes to ask for help, and I, I don't like asking for help for anybody, so, you know, just going to him and saying, hey, I, I need, if, if I want to get to where I want to be, I need you to help me to get there. Um, and I guess that was just a change that, you know, I had to take with him, and, you know, he took us under his wing, and he was tough on us. He held us accountable and um, yeah, helped us push through to where we are now. Absolutely. Yeah. So if you need help, go to a teacher, go to a counselor, go talk to your principal, ask your parent and guardian for help and assistance. That is okay. All right. So Sydney, overcoming adversity, you know, that's the central theme of not only tonight's presentation, but also your lived experience. How do your experiences in dealing with adversity, such as your mother's illness or family homelessness or anything, you know, relocation, making new friends, joining a new team, how did it drive you to succeed in your athletic and <clears throat> Your academic pursuits. Yeah, so uh, I mean, it's it's just it's just when when I, when I think about that, it just it just takes me to a place to where being at rock bottom and all of that it wasn't it wasn't like a, a factor to me that held me down. It, it it pushed us to go beyond where we could ever imagine. One, um, and just understanding that I, I didn't have the opportunity to fail. Um, you know, to, I, didn't, I didn't have, you know what I mean? I, I had to succeed, if that made sense. So I just took every day and I, I battled through it and understood that um, each and every day is an opportunity. Each and every day is an opportunity to make change in my life. Each and every day is an opportunity to make change in my family's life and push to, it, was, it wasn't about getting the NFL, it was about being the better version of myself every single day. And I think that's what pushed me and gradually changed who I was as a man and as a player on the field. And then again, just seeing my mom, um, you know, do what she did. You know, I just, I, I just, I would never not want that for my family. I would never want 
to have my family go through what I did when I was younger with her because I mean it's not it's not it's not easy. Um, you know I, I remember <laughs> going to like it was it was around this time of year and as Chris was coming along and I couldn't even invite people over to my place because I didn't have a place to stay. Like we were we were staying in a shelter so. It was just, uh, it was just a, it was a time that was very humbling, and it's a time that I will never return to as a man as well. Thank you for sharing that. I know that must have been really hard. You now achieve the dream that a lot of people really want to go to the NFL. A lot of people have vast dreams about going, and you play for our very own Philadelphia Eagles. How do you plan to leverage your platform to address issues like homelessness and support those who are also struggling with housing insecurity? Because you never know, right? By looking at somebody in the audience, and I would encourage you all right now, stop looking at me, I know I'm beautiful. <laughs> Look around the room right now, the people that are here. These are your neighbors, these are your community members, these are some of your classmates. You never know what someone is going through by just looking at them. Sydney, talk to us about it. Yeah, I mean, it's again, it's, it's, you can't really judge a book by its cover. You don't understand what's going on with someone's life. Um, you don't understand the struggles that somebody could be potentially going through. And um, yeah, it just, uh, I mean, just my platform now, I mean, being in the league was never, I mean, it was a goal of mine, but it, it, it's never the, the it, it's not the, the pinnacle of my career. Um, you know, being able to give back to the community and kind of be an ambassador for, from my story, I think I can relate it to a lot of people in the community just because, I mean, it's, it's more, what would you say, Justin, is it's a lot more frequent than you think, yes, right? Absolutely. And a lot more people go through it, and it's just not, like, I know I'm not the only one that goes through it, right? So yeah. um, in any way that I can push through and show people that, you know, it's, it's possible to be from here. I mean, I was, I was a Canadian kid from, I was a Canadian kid, and if you guys know how many Canadians get out of Canada and potentially make it to the league, it's about zero. Yeah. And I couldn't even, there was nobody in my corner that could envision that. There was nobody in my corner that um, could tell me the route to take to get to where I want to be. Yeah. Um, and as a man now, if I could provide that opportunity to not only the people of Philadelphia, but you know, the people in my community back home to show them the ropes and understand that you know, it is possible and you can achieve anything you put your mind to. Um, I mean, that, that's, that's what I just want to get out of it because, you know, a strong mind can push you through anything. And it's, uh, <laughs> I've been doubted a lot in my life and, um, you know, to be where I am now, it's, um, I'm not surprised because I put the, put the work in, but it's not, even, even when I sit here now, it's not where I want to be because I'm always, the ceiling always going to get higher. And, um, yeah, I mean, it's just you. Yeah, <laughs> and it does, and it does hit higher. home for, yeah. for downtown residents because about two and a half years ago, we had a flood that came through the district, right? Came right through the borough and it displaced a lot of families and some of those families are still displaced. So um, it can happen to anybody at any time. So right. you're absolutely right. It's not an isolated event. And I believe this is our last question. Yes, it is our last question. And you all in the audience will get an opportunity to ask Sydney some questions. So Sydney, last question. As a young athlete entering into the NFL you're in your rookie year, what are your goals both on and off the field? How do you plan to balance your career with personal growth and giving back to the community? And if you don't follow Sydney on Instagram, he just recently got a dog. So that is part, <laughs> all right, of his personal life things. All right, so Sydney, talk to us all about it. Yeah, no, I'll, um, I've got two dogs, Bentley and Louie. They're like my little kids, I guess you could call them. Um, I guess just goals. I mean, as a team, obviously, it's to bring the team back to the Super Bowl. And as a rookie, I mean, I, I, there's a lot of, again, there's a lot of humbling that you need to do and understand that the, the men around you are professional athletes as well. So um, I, just, I just want to provide and produce in any way I can. Um, you know, if that's at, that's wherever the team needs help, uh, one as a rookie. But um, I just want to be a productive teammate in that way. But I guess off the field, I mean, it's just, again, I want to get back to the community. I want to be more involved with the community. Um, I want to kind of leverage this platform of what I'm going through and what I've been through to, you know, help others and all that. But again, I think the main goal is to just keep the main thing the main thing and, you know, get back to the Super Bowl. So. We definitely want that, don't we? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to ask some questions to the audience. So raise your hand and we'll. I'll come by and can ask some questions. Well, 
What was it like when you got drafted? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, that was probably one of the craziest moments of my life. Um, you know, just sitting down. I had a nice little venue with my family and friends back up in Canada. And uh, just, uh, it, I mean, I, I, I wanted to, if, if there's any way I could explain it, I wanted to bottle that feeling because it was like the best thing I've ever experienced in my life. Um, and uh, again, I mean, there's just a lot of work that went into it. And, um, you know, a lot of people that sacrificed a lot for me to get there. So. You know, I mean, it was a breath of fresh. It was like, a, I mean, it was a breath of warm air to get that. But again, it's just about what you do now and what you do with the opportunity to be where my feet are right now, right? So, because as fast as you can get there, it can be taken away just as fast, you know. But uh, what team is Chase Brown on? Yeah, he plays for the Cincinnati Bengals. He got drafted in the fifth round. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, we have one, another question over here. The stigma that you received when you arrived in Florida from some of those prep school, private school kids, <laughs> how was that? What was that like for you? What was your mantra? Mm -hmm. And are they still friends? <laughs> um, I'm friends with some of them. I, I, it wasn't. It wasn't an easy transition. I, mean, I went from a public school platform to private school, and for those of you that have been to both, they're very different. Um, you know, I had, me and my brother had a tough time because where being at the public school and all these other schools, I, uh, they kinda, being the athlete was the cool thing, and as I went to this private school, it, being the smart kid and you know, being in, having the 4.0 GPA and, um, you know, being in all the AP classes and doing all that was like the most, that was held on a pedestal different to athletics because athletics was down here and um, being a student was number one. And I guess this, the stigma, the, that situation, I mean, I, I was in 11th grade. I was walking over to the middle school taking classes with eighth graders to catch up um, because we were so behind in our credits as we went down to the state. So, uh, it was tough from that because you know you got you got a lot of people talking, a lot of people kind of you know putting you in a place to where you've never been. So it was humbling, but I understood that I had a job to do. I understood that if I wanted to go to college and even have the opportunity to you know leverage football, I had to perform in the classroom. And um, you know, so I, I, I didn't really care. I mean, it got to the point where I just relied on my brother. I relied on my teammates. Um, I relied on the people around me, to uh, my coaches, my, some of the teachers to push us. Um, and I guess just a mantra that I've, I've always lived by is, I mean, I said this at the combine, I said it to the Eagles before they drafted me, is it's, I think therefore I miss. And what that means to me is just, you can't think about what's in front of you, just gotta react and kinda you know, give it your all. So. Um, because if you don't, then, I mean, that's opportunity missed, if that makes any sense, and that helps answer your question. Okay, we have a question right here. What are your, what are your dreams after football? Good question. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> um, God. Just got yeah. Started, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, but it's a, it's a really good question, but just with my, my, how my mind goes, it's always changing, so I don't, I don't know where I'm going to be. I don't know what my mind's going to be then, and I don't know how I'm going to be feeling, so... Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I wish I could answer that for you, but I'm sure it's going to change tomorrow. How do you feel after all you've been through? How do I feel? Yeah. Um, to be honest, man, I, I, I don't feel like I've done anything yet, if I'm being completely honest. I, uh, oh, my God. <laughs> I see two. I didn't know we had two mics going. Right here? Yeah, you know, I... I, um, I honestly feel like I haven't done anything yet. Um, you know, I'm just doing what I'm supposed to do. Nothing more, nothing less, and um, I just kind of stay remain where my feet are, man. Okay, we have a question back here. Yeah, what's up? Hi, Sydney. Uh, first, I want to say uh, go birds. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, growing up in Canada, were you a, did you ever actually play hockey? And are you a fan of the NHL? Yeah, Toronto Maple Leafs. I'm from Ontario. I'm from London, Ontario, Canada. So the Toronto Maple Leafs are my team. Um, Played hockey in, <laughs> you guys are what, Flyers? 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 Uh, uh, 
learn to love them. Learn to love them. I'm in Philly now, so I got to learn to love them. Um, but yeah, no, I played hockey a little bit with my buddies. I mean, up in Canada, you can skate pretty much here and there, right? So I did that a little bit, but um, those of you who play hockey and you parents that know, I mean, that, that, that equipment is really expensive, like really, really expensive. So I never really had the opportunity to play competitive. I do love the sport, though. Question, question right here. What is your mindset when you're losing? How do you stay positive? Say again. Great question. What is your mindset uh, when you are losing? How do you stay positive? When you're losing? Yes. Um, yeah, I think, I, think, I think the best thing you can do from losing is just understand that there's lessons from it, one, and that there's going to be another opportunity where you can win. And that's what should keep you going whenever. So when you do feel like you, you are losing, just know that there's going to be an, another opportunity to, um, to get for yourself. And I guess just something that Coach Seriani says to us is this dog mentality, for those of you that um, have heard about that. It's just, there's like, he talks about how his uncle or grandfather owned this farm and they had these dogs, right? And they used to chase the rabbits and um, all these dogs cared about was chasing the rabbit. And nothing could lock them off of them other than just attacking this rabbit and getting it. And there were days that sometimes they wouldn't get it, but all these dogs knew is that they would wake up in the morning and understand that there was going to be another opportunity to go out and do the same thing over again, right? So I guess that's just another thing that you can kind of relate to is just the dog mentality, is understanding that each day is going to show you another opportunity and that, um, you know, with loss, there is going to be gain. And it's just what you do at the moment. Hey, Sydney over here, brother. Um, thank you so much for sharing tonight. I really appreciate you coming out and being open with us. Um, you mentioned that for you, the hardest thing is asking for help. So as you transition to an adult, and as we got a lot of kids here, how do you overcome that hurdle of isolation and, and extending yourself to ask for help when you need it? Uh, and then a second question, uh, how are you doing with getting Howie to get your brother over here as well? <laughs> uh. <laughs> We're, we're working on it. We're working on the contract. We're actually talking now. Um, you know, even as a man now, I, I struggle with it. I, I don't like asking for it. I don't want to feel like I own anybody anything. Um, and I guess that's just been me. I just, I, I just don't feel like owing anybody anything because just in my life, um, you know, there's, there's a lot of people that have helped us in so many ways and asked for nothing in return. There's also uh, some people that have asked some stuff. I mean, they help us out and they expect something back. So, um, you know, just, just asking for help has always been tough in my end. But, um, you know, being able to open up and ask for it is sometimes the best thing. And it is the best thing to do because there's people around you that understand your situation better than yourself sometimes, if that makes any sense. And um, you, you don't know how willing and helpful people can be until you ask for it. I think that's another big thing, but um, yeah. Okay, we got a question here. Do you play hockey in your meantime? What's that? Do you play hockey in your meantime? Um, yeah, I mean, if I got hurt on the ice, you could <laughs> be, able to pass, be able to Philly pretty quick. So no, not anymore. Okay, one more question. Um, what was your inspiration in any hard times in your life, even if it was just like a memory that you don't even think about anymore? Yeah. Um, no, I, I was very blessed. I, I grew up with a twin brother, you know, somebody who was exactly like me in every single way possible. So my motivation always was him. Um, <laughs> you know, in anything we did, it was a competition. And... You know, if, if he did one thing, I'd want to do it better and vice versa. So that just kind of pushed us to where we are now. And even, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm watching his games and I'm like, okay, how am I going to beat him this week in the special teams phase of the game? Because that's what he's doing over there. Or if he makes a play on offense, no, now it's my turn to make something happen on defense. Um, so that's just always propelled me as a man and as an athlete and someone on and off the field. Uh, it's not only on the field, but in life, there's a lot of stuff that happens too. So. Um, you know, just the constant competition and support that I've had from him has been my biggest motivator. And um, he's been my biggest role model from, 
the time I was born. And I guess just a memory is, I, <laughs> is the, the, the feeling I had, um, you know, when I came home from Florida and seeing that my mom was back with my grandmother. And I guess just that moment in time, I'm mean, having to sound like just like the video, but you know, in a moment of time where I felt like I had everything, she had nothing. Um, it just kind of stuck with me, um, you know, and it just is something that I always remind myself each and every day that um, I've got a job to do, I've got people to take care of, and um, as a man, that's always going to propel me to do more. Awesome. Um, so, time for two more questions. We got one right here. Um, so, we've told our kids that they're blessed, and we kind of think of ourselves living in a kind of a bubble here. And so, what's the most important thing you would want us to take away from tonight? And if you could ask anything of us as a blessed community, what would it be? Yeah. Um, you know, if, if you could just take one thing away from this, it's that, you know, adversity is something that affects everybody. Um, you know, it's not only you know, athletes and people that are able to tell their story because I, I was lucky enough to tell my story and share my story on the NFL platform that kind of propelled it into what it is. Um, and just to understand that there's people in this room, there's people all around us that are going through something. So, um, you know, you never know what's going on in their life. You never know how, um, you know, someone's personal life is affecting them at work, at school, whatever it is. Um, and just to support and help in any way possible when um, you might recognize something like that. And then I guess just as a blessed community, um, you know, what, you want me to ask what you guys could do for, if you want to just repeat that again for me. Um, if, so we're a blessed community, so if you could ask anything of us as a blessed community, what would you ask us to, to do? Yeah, I mean, as, as a blessed community, um, one, stay blessed <laughs> easily. But again, just take, take each and every day one day at a time and understand that um, I know I had a little girl over here that you know, just from losses there are going to be gain and that um, you know, every single day you're faced with this opportunity of life and it's all about what you do with that opportunity, if that makes any sense. And here is our last question. Go for it. Um, when you go against your brother, if you do, do you think you're going to beat him? Yes, every single time. No doubt. I can say that with confidence with everything I do. Um, I'll beat him every single time. But he is very talented. I love that man to death. Is there anyone else that wants to ask questions? Or is, do you want to close well, up there? We're now going to move to our autograph section. If we can give Sydney a really loud round of applause. Amazing story. Sharing with us. Absolutely. So the line, if you have purchased an autograph for a picture and signature from Sydney, will start here. If you haven't purchased the ticket, you still have the ability by using the QR code up here. Thank you all for coming out this evening. Take care of yourselves and each other.